e-waste is a gold mine. I mean, it literally is a gold mine. There is more gold in e-waste than there is in, the, in digging ore out of the ground. So there are some materials there which the world really wants. Um, and a lot of the materials are, are very scarce. These materials are very difficult to mine. They're quite polluting. There's a geopolitical element in so much as these materials are concentrated in one or two countries, which puts a lot of risk on the global supply chain. So as a consequence, there's a definite need for us to work out how we can recycle and reuse these elements when the products finally reach the end of their life. Everything is digital by default now. And so, you know, 20 years ago, all of the things in your house, your car, these would be predominantly analog. But as digital is becoming um, prevalent in almost every aspect of our society, it means that the semiconductors and the chips are finding their way into all of our devices. And the big difference now is that these are completely different materials and, and completely different um, products to the products we're used to. So the traditional recycling industry would be looking at metal, um, you'd be looking at recycling kind of materials that come in large quantities. Um, but in the digital world, that that's changes. We've got a lot more exotic materials in there. Um, the quantities are smaller and the recycling is, is a bit more complicated. So the, the number that bounded around was 50 million tonnes of e-waste a year. That data is a little old now. Because of COVID, we haven't really been collecting the data, but I'm pretty sure if you looked at the, the chart that was going up. I think one of the challenges is that a lots of devices are effectively disappearing out of the countries where the e-waste is being used and formed. And they're finding themselves in other places in the world where um, people are concentrating on getting the high value materials, the gold, the copper out of the electronic waste, but they really don't have the capability and skill to properly recycle these things in a safe way. You know, the UK is a good example where there are companies who are looking at extracting um, things like the rare earth metals, and they're using either chemical processing or filtration. And, you know, they are ex finding exciting ways of doing it, but they need to be able to scale up to actually recycle more of this. You know, this means that the, the true value of the materials needs to be understood, but also the true cost of recycling has to be reflected in the process. And also, how do we create a level playing ground um, which allows them to be able to compete once their, their ideas are commercially viable so that they can overcome the, the hurdle of trying to compete against a, um, a different company which is sending it out somewhere else um, and therefore doing it cheaper but not actually doing it properly. I think the only way that we can join the recyclers together with the manufacturers is by putting a, a set of standards in that are agreed by all parties so that the manufacturers know that they create the products to a set of standards and those standards that they are using are the standards that mean that they can be recycled or repaired. And so if you're gluing the battery into the device, well, that's going to make it very difficult to um, repair it. If you're putting products in that are very difficult to extract, it's going to make recycling difficult. Within our industry, there is um, a view that we should um, really try and get a bit more out of our, our electronic products. Before we had this interview, I had this conversation um, with people my parents' generation, and they've all bought um, mobile phones and they've bought tablets. And I kind of asked them, well, well you know, what is it that, that frustrates them? What frustrates them is they say, we buy these things, we look after them. But after seven, eight years, um, the manufacturer says, well, we can't put the latest operating system on. And they say, okay. And then sometime later, the apps all say, well, actually, we don't support the old operating system. And then they're sitting there with a device that functions perfectly well. There's no physical reason why you can't use it anymore, but because the software vendors have decided that they're not going to manufacture and support this operating system anymore, and the apps um, are not going to support the operating system anymore, the devices effectively become useless. But they're not useless, and yes, okay, if you want the latest camera and if you want the latest function, that's great. But if you are happy with your phone and you're happy with the function that it has, why is it that the phone is no longer suitable? Why is it that you then have to um, get rid of the phone because you can't use it. The same thing happens on a bigger commercial scale in a data center where after four or five years, the big commercial manufacturers aren't supporting the hardware anymore and Microsoft isn't supporting the operating system and the software vendors aren't supporting the software. But the thing is, the product is functioning perfectly well. Um, so the first step of the way is not to send it to recycling, it's to reuse it. 
So can we then put it onto the second market and sell it on, and then it has another purpose and another life for a period of time going forward? And if you actually look to see, there is a second-hand market developing in Europe now where you know, effectively they have equivalent to like an eBay, an auction site, um, and companies and firms can buy um, second-use equipment, and then that equipment has another lease of life going forward. Another aspect that's important is the ability to repair, the right to repair. Um, up to now, it's been quite difficult to repair um, electronic devices. So as soon as there's something that has failed in it, the cost of repair makes it too expensive. And then these devices then end up in waste and to be recycled. But when the problem is maybe relatively simple, there needs to be a better process to help us actually repair a device that's broken, and then we can keep it running um, uh, for a, a, a long period.